New safe sport measures announced by Canada's sport minister, Pascal saint She joins us now. Uh, minister, you have been having countless conversations over the last weeks and months. What's your sense on how we got to this situation you're calling a crisis? Well, one of the things that I've been hearing throughout those consultations, and that is, of course, from the athletes, is that they have felt in the past that they were unheard in the sports system and the, that the situations that came out in the media recently, um, a lot of the athletes have been telling me that they've been talking about this for, for quite a while and they, they felt like nothing changed and that they were unheard. So um, that, that's one of the big things that I heard uh, throughout those conversations. And also the other thing that I think uh, pretty much everyone agrees in the system is that uh, there was this need for an independent mechanism uh, that could receive um, phone calls or you know the, the, the complaints by the athletes. And I don't wanna say it that way, it's my French, so I'm sorry about that. But what I mean by that is uh, somewhere the athletes can turn to when they're going through situations of abuse or harassment or maltreatment and uh, receive counsel, uh, have a third party and real independent third party you do investigations and if uh, there needs to be sanctions or recommendations that the, that you know that that system exists the sense i get is that there is an urgency to this i i sense that from you as well how are you able to bring all of the stakeholders together so quickly and then put forward these new measures as quickly as you did well i think that the the, the stories that we've heard in the past few weeks and months calls us to be uh, effective and to act quickly and to put our energy in this. Um, and, you know, I've, I've been trying to use my leadership and the role that I'm in to convey all the parties, make sure that all the stakeholders, all the participants in the sports system have a chance to express themselves, tell me what their preoccupations are, what their reality is, so that it can be taken into account. But we need to move into action quickly. What level of confidence do you have that this time things will be different? Because I'm sure you've seen it. There are people out there who remain skeptical. And I know you specifically pointed to that funding model. And of course, effective April next year, uh, things might change around that if, if uh, NSOs aren't accountable to what you're laying forward. Some thoughts on that? You know, we're building something and I, I know that there's a lot of anxiety about all the changes that is being uh, you know, done in the in the sports system, um, and and you know the NSOs are nervous. Athletes, uh, some athletes are also nervous. I want to make sure that this system works because it's new. It's never been done before in Canada. It's a new service, and we want to make sure that the, it it corresponds to what the athletes need, the services they need, the, the uh, that they're accompanied properly whenever they're facing rough situation and that it's treated in a professional, transparent manner. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're going to work hard and we're going to make sure that this works. That's a sense I got, a very holistic approach. But I know you're really excited about the Office of the Sport Integrity Commissioner. Tell me about this and tell me about how it's going to be effective in the process of making this a safer environment for all athletes. This is a big part. It's, it's a big piece having that system because athletes and you've we've all heard the stories, the gymnasts, the, the bobsleigh athletes, uh, you know, we, we've all heard those those stories and we want athletes that are living these situations to have a place to turn to uh, whenever it's happening so there can be actions taken quickly. Um, so that's really important. But what I'm now mostly going to work on is preventing those situations because yes, an independent mechanism um, and, and that office is also going to be able to help about this, the, the cu culture in sport and help organization um, um, improve this culture and make sure that the, the, the uh, environment offered to the athletes is, is safe and healthy, but uh, we also need to act on the prevention, uh, making sure that the uh, coaches, officials, uh, board members, athletes themselves know uh, when they're in a bad situation or a good situation, when they're being harassed or abused, and when it's just pushing athletes uh, 
so that they can perform to their best. Um, so there's a lot of education that needs to be done. That's, that's also something important. And the other thing is making sure that uh, the provinces um, and, and the local clubs and the provincial clubs are also on board because not all situations that we've heard ha happen at the national level. Sometimes it's at the community level, sometimes the provincial level. So we need to make sure that athletes are safe from the beginning to the end of their career. A few more quick questions for you, Minister. Thank you for the time. Uh, you have talked at great length about the role athletes will play in this, an athlete advisory committee, uh, the athlete voice at the table. Are you hearing from the right people? And what role are survivors going to play in this process as well? Well, I invite, of course, all athletes to go through their organizations also, because at some point we do need um, uh, representation uh, from the athletes, but I'm I'm also having conversations with athletes wh wherever I go, whether I go to a basketball match or a volleyball match. Uh, so you know, I'm I'm really open, and I really want to hear about everyone's stories. Um, I know that it's been a tough time for a lot of people, uh, but you know, in in a system, we need to have uh, representation. Uh, of the athletes there's the you know because because my my job is at the national and you know international level for the canadian athletes so of course it's the athletes that are sitting on the board of uh, the um, olympic committee for example the paralympic committee athletes can um, that have a broad representation of athletes no matter the sport uh, winter sports summer sport um and and athletes can talk also to their representative to make sure that uh, they're heard as well so and i'm going to keep on talking to everyone uh, it's it's a work in progress and we need the, those voices heard and part of our decision process uh, people in this country believe in the power of sport they want to believe in the power of sport i know uh, during your announcement you talked about the positive experiences minister that you have had in sport uh, not all Canadians, not all athletes share that positive experience. And so I wonder maybe on a personal note, when you, when you reflect over these last number of months and the reckoning that the, the system has had, international headlines of these athletes penning letters, calling out toxic environments, you're overseeing this. You're, you're, you're speaking about sport in Canada. How does that sit with you when you know that not every athlete in this country is is having an enriching experience? It doesn't sit right. Uh, it makes me extremely angry and it also makes me sad um, because I know what an impact sport has on a person's life and you know because I've been through it I've had a great experience in sport whether it was while I was a swimmer or a, a volleyball player and it made me who I am today. Uh, I know how much impact it, it had on my life. Um, and it was a positive one. But when it turns to negative, um, it can destroy someone's self esteem. We've heard about stories from the, uh, the, the artistic swimmers that uh, have uh, eating disorders because of how they were treated in their sport. It makes me really angry because uh, sport should be the opposite. It's supposed to be something great in someone's life for, for our psychological and physical health, for uh, just becoming great adults and 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 when i see that uh, it's the opposite that happens to some people i feel that we all need to move into action we all need to take a stand and one of the main things you know you've been asking why it's so important for me to talk with athletes is because we need to break the culture of silence we've heard this through how throughout the society there's you know it's a conversation that we've had but some sectors you know like sport still needs to break that culture of silence and i hope that the office that we're putting in place is going to be part of that and i hope that all the measures that we're taking and making sure that the athletes are represented at every stage of our decision process i hope it helps break that culture of silence um, i want to salute again the courage that these athletes had uh, speaking out telling us their story because that's why we're doing change and i want to say to all the others that um, sometimes stand by and don't know what to do that when we see abuse and when we see uh, harassment or, or situations that we're not comfortable with, that we wouldn't want to be part of, uh, we need to speak out as well. 
a lot of work done, Minister, and a lot of work ahead, no doubt. I appreciate your time today. Thank you, Devin, for uh, taking time to uh, talk about this story. It's really important. And I, I really hope that in the next few years, parents feel safe to send their kids into organized sport and that um, we bring back joy in sport. It's, it's important for everyone. Couldn't agree more. Thank you, Minister. Thank you, Devin.